Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. I do apologize for not uploading last week. Uh, as you already know, if you follow me on Twitter, that I wasn't feeling all that well and I was pretty sick, uh, but I have recovered now and the normal uploads will resume. Uh, so this video is going to be focused on essentially getting you to uh, fully learn uh, and of course utilize curl to its maximum potential. And I'm going to be covering as many commands as I possibly can. Now, that being said, curl has a lot of functionality that uh, you need to explore on your own as well. But I'll be covering some of the most important bits of functionality that it does offer to a normal user or a power user as well. So uh, without any further ado, let's get started. So for those of you who have never heard of curl, curl is essentially a utility that allows you to transfer data to or from a network server using one of the supported protocols. Now the protocols that it does support are HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, uh, FTPS, uh, you also have your SFTP, uh, you have TFTP, Telnet, etc. Et now there are various other uh, protocols that it does support in addition to the ones I've just mentioned, uh, but I will get into that later. Now, the great thing about curl is that it is a multi-platform tool, which means uh, it works on Linux, uh, Mac OS and Windows. Now I'm going to be covering how to use it on Linux, but of course the commands are pretty much the same. Now, in regards to installing uh, installing curl, it, as far as I know, it comes pre-installed with most uh, Linux distributions. Uh, but you, if you want to install it, whether or not you're using the uh, aptitude package manager, you can use the sudo apt-get install curl command. And if you're if you're using uh, the, an Arch-based distribution, you can use the pacman s command to install it. And the the name of the package is curl. All right. If you are using a Mac OS installation or Mac OS as your operating system, you can use the brew install command. So that is brew install and curl. All right. And that's pretty much uh, simple right over there. With Windows, you need to download an executable or a bin file, if I'm not wrong, and you need to save it in your Windows directory. And of course, from that, you can uh, directly launch it from your uh, command prompt. Uh, that being said, uh, let's get started. Now, curl, as I mentioned, comes pre-installed with most uh, Linux distributions. So let me just clear the terminal here and I'll maximize it so we can see what's going on. All right, so the basic syntax is as follows. But before we do that, let's open up the help menu. You can explore the help menu if you are, uh, if you're really looking for a bit more functionality or you're looking for specific functions. As you can see, it's a very comprehensive tool and I'm primarily going to be covering uh, the basic commands that you that allow you to utilize it quite well. Uh, that being said, many people ask me how I personally uh, learn about a command that or a tool that I'm not familiar with. I personally use the man uh, or the manual for each of these tools. So the manual contains a very, very good description of uh, of all the bits of functionality in regards to a tool. Uh, and all Linux tools pretty much uh, come with a manual and the manual is extremely useful. So if you, uh, you want to check them out, go ahead and do it. I really, really recommend it when learning how to, uh, how to use a tool. All right, so let's talk about the basic queries you can perform with curl. All right, so when I talk about interacting with the various protocols, this particular video is going to be focused on HTTP and HTTPS. I know uh, there is uh, FTP functionality, but I'm not going to be getting into that because that's more uh, that's where things sort of get a bit different. But for now, let's focus on those two protocols. All right, so when performing a basic query of a URL, uh, you essentially type in curl and then the URL. So for example, if I type in um, hsploit.com here uh, and I hit enter, what will happen is this will essentially fetch the content of the specified URL. So for example, I've hit curl https hsploit.com and it will essentially return to me the content of the entire web page. Now you might be wondering, well, how can we verify this? And that's where we get into essentially saving uh, your output into a file or downloading files. So I can say, for example, curl, and if I want to output the uh, the output of this command or the contents of this query, I can say, I can use the lowercase o, and I can then say, I specify the directory I want to save it in. So home, Alexis, desktop, and I'll just, uh, sorry, that is desk, uh, that is desktop, and I'll just call it uh, hsploit.html, um, and after that, I'll type in hsploit.com, right over here, that is the URL. Now, it's very important to specify uh, the protocol that you're using. So for example, if a website is HTTP, you will need to specify it if, it is, if it is using the HTTPS protocol, it is very important. But I'll, I'll get into redirection in a second. So 
https hsploit.com and we hit enter and it's going to give you this little status right over here essentially giving you an update as to what is the current status of the entire process here now for some reason it's taking quite a while now uh, but we'll wait for it to complete and there we are so let me explain a bit of uh, the, uh, the the structure of this little status uh, menu or table here. So, for example, you have the total amount to be downloaded, uh, the amount received, uh, the average download speed, uh, the upload speed, the uh, the total time, uh, the time spent, and the time left. And uh, right now, if we cat uh, the yeah, the hexploit dot um, well, actually, if we need to go into our desktop here. Uh, so if we cat hexploit.html here, you can see the entire contents. Now, if we open that up here, if I open that up with uh, with Chrome, for example, let me just open this up. Where is Google Chrome? Um, uh, where is Google Chrome here? There we are, Google Chrome. If I just open that up here in a web page, you can see that it'll pretty much, uh, it has all the content of my website. So hexploit.com, and it's pretty cool that it does save the entire contents of the HTML file here. Now, of course, this is going to um, th this is going to leave out uh, extra bits of files in regards to the uh, the web page, but this is a great way of saving the contents of a query. Now, that could be for any other protocol. It not it does not necessarily need to be for the HTTP or the HTTPS protocols. All right. Now, when we talk about downloading files. That is pretty much how it goes for a, a web page or for a query. So let me just remove the hsplay.html. Mind you, I could have saved it as a TXT file. I simply am saving it so that I can use it uh, at a later time. Now, you can also use curl to download files from the web, which is really, really awesome. And that's primarily why I have the Ubuntu page open here, because I want an example to use. So for example, if I wanted to download the Ubuntu ISO, uh, I go to the download page and I select the uh, version 18.4, uh, 18.04 LTS, and it's going to start the download. So if I just go into show all downloads here, and let me just copy the link here, uh, the download link. So I can go into curl and I can say, for example, I can give uh, the file name a new name or I can just download it directly. So let me explain the two ways of doing it. So for example, I can say curl, I can output the, uh, I, can out the I, I can say download this file as Ubuntu, uh, ISO dot ISO, sorry, dot ISO, and then I, I paste in the, the download link. And what that is going to do is that is going to download the file and save it as Ubuntu ISO dot ISO. Now, the extension is very important because if you get that wrong, it's going to save it as a different file type. All right. So if I enter, you can see it's going to start the download. And there we are. We can see that the total amount to be downloaded is one, uh, 1,904 megabytes, which is about 1.9 gigabytes. And you have the received, the download speed, the average download speed, and the current download speed right over here, the time left, etc., etc. Now, you can see that my internet speed is pretty bad right now. But that's primarily because I am updating one of my systems, so I do apologize for that. Uh, so if we check the desktop, you can see we have the Ubuntu ISO over here, which does prove uh, that it does work. All right, now the other way of doing it, let me just remove the Ubuntu ISO.ISO file there. The other way of doing it is by downloading it with its original file name, which is specified on the on the web server. So to do that, I simply type in curl and I use the capital O and I paste in the download link and hit enter. And that is going to download the file with its original download name. So you can see Ubuntu 18.04.2. Uh, desktop uh, amd64bit.iso or md64.iso. All right, so that is pre pre pretty much how to download files. And now that I've explained that, uh, we can now talk about redirects because redirects are extremely important. So uh, if I just get rid of Ubuntu here. So uh, if a website is uh, redirecting to another URL, it's very important that you know how to specify this to curl. And why is that important? So in many cases, redirects may be set up. And of course, that is specified by the HTTP uh, 300 request or the it could be any 300 request, mostly 301 or 303. And it's very important that you know how to specify this with curl. Now, the HTTP, the HTTP protocol syntax is very important in curl. And you can do this by using the L command or the capital L command, sorry. So, for example, if my website was, uh, if the URL h hsploit.com was, uh, so if I say hsploit.com, was redirecting to another URL uh, to another URL, and I wanted to specify this to curl, I would use the L command. Now, I know that my website is not, and a great way of demonstrating this is by using uh, the, so for example, if I say curl HTTP uh, hsploit.com right over here, and I hit enter, and we'll give that a few seconds here. 
and I'll explain what's happening in a second so that you can see the importance of specifying uh, the L parameter if there is a redirect. So you can see I got no result and that's because curl is going to HTTP and that's the importance of protocols with curl. You need to specify the correct protocol regardless of whether or not you're using FTP, uh, HTTP, HTTPS. So my website is HTTPS. Now my website by default will redirect. However, you need to specify that with curl. I do apologize for that. And let me just clear the notifications here. Uh, so again, I, 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 as I mentioned, you need to specify this with curl. So I can say curl and I use the L command over here. And then I specify HTTP uh, and then I say hsploit.com here, right over here and I hit enter. And that will essentially redirect me to the appropriate uh, web page. And uh, as you can see right over here, we get the entire contents of the hsploit.com uh, website or HTML file rather. So that is how to do it, essentially how to uh, work around um, how to work around redirects. All right. Now, another bit of important, uh, another important command, sorry, is uh, the querying response headers. So you can also view uh, and analyze the response headers being sent by a particular web server. Uh, and this can help in web assessment. So for example, if I wanted to query the response, uh, the response headers are being sent back by the web server, I can say curl uh, capital I, and I can say HTTPS, um, hsploit.com uh, uh, and I can just hit enter and what's going to happen here is it'll, it'll give it a few seconds this is going to depend on uh, varyingly depending on your on your particular web server so you can see it gives us the protocol we have cookies here uh, we have the PHP version so we're getting important information now uh, looks like we have some WordPress JSON files here by, delivered by the CDN or the content delivery network uh, let's look at some important cookies here that might give us a bit of information in regards to the website. So an important bit of information here, and I'm, of course I'm using this as an, as an example, is the DWQA. And this is my question and answer plugin that I use. And you can see that it has an anonymous cookie that's being set here. And that can give you information as to a bit more of how the web application is working. So that is how to query the response headers being sent by the server. And of course you can see right over here, this is a Cloudflare server and we have the CF Ray, which is the Cloudflare Ray that essentially uh, uh, is telling Cloudflare uh, what uh, it's giving information to Cloudflare about the particular client that is accessing the web server. All right. Now, that is very interesting. However, it really gets interesting because curl can also do a really cool thing. It can also allow you to view the request headers and the connection details so you can view the TLS handshake, etc, etc. So if I say curl, v and i say curl v uh https um and i say hsploit.com here and i hit enter you can see that we can view the entire tls and shake which is really really unique and awesome so uh let me just see if i can figure, uh which is wait which is right over here so there we are we can see the the initial connection here uh, we am particularly looking for the TLS handshake and right over here we can see the TLS handshake taking place so you can see that it is successful and this is a great way of identifying um, uh, problems with the TLS handshake if the certificate has an issue so for example we have the client hello the server hello we then have the encrypted extensions being exchanged uh, the certificate is being exchanged and then verified and then finally the TLS handshake is completed you can see that we have the version TLS version 1.3 and the ciphers that are being used or the encryption being used. All right. So you also have information about the certificates uh, expiry date uh, when it was actually registered, uh, the issuer, all that good stuff. So if you do want to view, uh, if you do want to view the connection details and a bit of an advanced uh, information or additional information in regards to the connection, you can go ahead and uh, use the, uh, the V command. Now, the last thing that I want to cover in regards to uh, the HTTP and HTTP pro HTTPS protocols is the fact that you can craft post requests. And many people have seen me using this in CTFs, particularly when I'm essentially brute forcing um, login pages. So uh, I can give you an example. So if I wanted to essentially test credentials on a, on a website, and this can really be in any, uh, I, I can be using any parameters. I could be spoofing various cookies, all that good stuff. So for example, I can say, if I wanted to log in uh, to WordPress site and I wanted to essentially test various credentials, I can say, for example, curl data, and that is the, uh, sorry, the, the data that we're specifying. And then in here, I would specify log. And this is the particular syntax for WordPress. And the password would be equal to, I can say, password here. 
and then I close the uh, the, parent, uh, the the quotation marks, and then I specify uh, the WordPress page here. So I can say HTTP uh, S, and I can say WordPress dot com, and I can say WordPress uh, login dot PHP, and that is the login page right over here. And if I hit enter. Uh, and I know this, you can see that admin is not a valid username on WordPress.com, etc. You get the response. So this is a great way of testing various pieces of data. So you can also play around with cookies, all that good stuff. And in this case, we're simply playing around with the login and the password parameters here. And we've specified our own values. Now, if you do need to, uh, to encode the particular parameters, you can also use Burp Suite for that. So for example, um, let's see if I wanted to go, um, let me just uh, turn intercept on here. I just went into hsploit.com here. So I just say hsploit.com and I say WordPress uh, login.php, sorry, .php here. And I just hit enter. And uh, for some reason, we're getting stack, uh, stack. We're just getting a stack protect here. In any case, uh, the, what, what I was getting to, if you do want to encrypt your URL or any other parameters, you can use the control plus U key. So, that is pretty much all that I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section on my social networks or at the forum at hackersploit.org and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace guys.